To breaking news now on the dramatically escalating war in Ukraine. Russian forces have taken control of Europe's biggest nuclear power station. The plant was shelled earlier in the day with one of the buildings catching fire. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says it's nuclear terror and is imploring the West to act. Uh, all this as Vladimir Putin insists the invasion is going according to plan. They feared the worst and it came. Europe's biggest nuclear power plant on fire and under attack. Shelling from Russian troops transforming Putin's invasion into a global threat. Ukraine's besieged president with his most desperate appeal yet, begging the world to take notice. Europeans, wake up. Tell your politicians. Russian forces are shooting at the nuclear plant. Zelensky calling this nuclear terror. Firefighters also came under attack as they tried to avert a catastrophe. 35 years on, but in this part of the world, Chernobyl still looms large. The foreign minister warning this disaster could be 10 times worse. Locals had feared the plant would become a target. Just two days ago, they rallied outside in a show of force. Sure, sure. Standing firm against stun grenades, they were forced to take cover from heavy artillery. For the moment, a crisis appears to have been averted. The fire at the plant extinguished and radiation levels remain normal. What I want to emphasise, though, is that there was real danger tonight. A fire at a nuclear power plant is a dangerous thing. Another blow to a nation that's already withstood so much. A quiet street in the suburbs. Rocked by Russian munition. This dash cam capturing eight projectiles above the northern city of Cherniv. At least one of the weapons striking a residential building. Nearby, a children's hospital and pharmacies, with people queuing outside. In a split second, the barrage killed at least 30 people, blowing apart bedrooms, tearing walls from buildings and reducing roads to rubble. Cherniv's oil depot was also hit, thick smoke blacking out the sky. Further west in Zotomir, this man walks through his decimated home, showing cameras the exact place his daughter was killed. On the other side of the capital, drones show an entire town gutted and burned. Borodyanka Yanka, broken from every angle. The key southern port of Mariupol, surrounded by Russian troops and facing a humanitarian crisis local authorities describe as genocide. We do not have water supply, we do not have sanitary system and we do not have heating. With Russian forces also occupying the city of Kherson and advancing on Mykolaiv, it appears Putin is attempting to cut Ukraine off from the sea and build a land corridor stretching all the way to the border. While a massive convoy north of the capital has made little progress in three days. Moscow releasing vision it claims shows forces entering the Kyiv region. As Vladimir Putin declared the special military operation is going according to plan, praising his hero soldiers and calling the French president, the two leaders speaking for 90 minutes. The chilling assessment from Emmanuel Macron, Putin wants to seize all of Ukraine and the worst is yet to come. President Zelensky appealing to the West to give him more warplanes, challenging Putin to meet face to face. If you don't want to leave now, sit down with me at the negotiating table, but not from 30 metres away. Referencing the last time Putin and Macron attempted diplomacy. A second round of peace talks began with a flurry of handshakes and ended with a single agreement, creating humanitarian corridors to get civilians out and supplies in, but no ceasefire. Far from the front lines in the city of Lviv, the nation's battle victories are posted on a coffee shop window daily, unverified and likely optimistic. The city feeling the squeeze of war. Supermarkets are running low and rationing supplies with a 20-litre limit for fuel. But vital work must go on. Parliament gathering briefly to vote on defence and security issues. The national anthem filling the most targeted building in the country. Church bells ringing across Europe for peace in Ukraine as refugees are greeted in Poland by a modern hymn. 
and helped off trains in Berlin by a crowd of volunteers ready to feed and clothe them. A week into war, the human bottleneck at the border remains. This queue of people waiting to cross stretches for kilometres Poland, about 100 metres that way, and every single one of these people is leaving behind their lives and their loves. This man just kissed his children goodbye, heartache for which he says there are no words. Veronica fled Putin's troops on the Belarus border, leaving her husband behind to fight. She says the children were terrified. They don't know where they'll end up. They're part of the fastest exodus of refugees this century. Most here are confident of a Ukrainian victory and determined to one day return to their homeland. Amelia Adams is in the western city of Lviv for us. Amelia, after eight days of violence, this is a major escalation. Oh, it's a terrifying and, and quite extraordinary development. Ukraine officials have just confirmed Russian forces do now occupy that nuclear power plant, adding a fresh sense of fear and uncertainty for people right across the country. Even here in Lviv, we're a long way um, from the Zaporizhia plant, luckily, but there's a constant sense of anxiety. The country's at war. The city is full of people trying to flee. We've had regular air raid sirens. We've just had one. And while you have to, you know, you can run underground to shelter from potential shelter, you cannot run from a radiation threat like the fire that we saw at that nuclear plant. There are 15 nuclear reactors in the country and, as the president said, if one of them blows up, that's it. Melissa, that's the end of Europe. Amelia, thank you.